Hello everybody, welcome to Big Bird Outdoors. My name is Nate and today I am out on the ice. Finally, it has been a while since I've done an ice fishing video. Um, too long actually, I've just been caught up with, you know, friends, family and such uh, coming out. So I haven't really been able to record. So today we're going to be salmon fishing. Very main, very main. Um, for most of you who have seen uh, my channel before, you know, I go to school up in Maine. So, you know, the salmon, uh, probably along with the toga, are probably the two namesake fish of the state. So um, I'm going to show you a little bit. It's kind of going to be a mix of, you know, tips and tricks of how I catch uh, landlocked salmon through the ice, um, as well as just enjoying some fishing. So um, we'll pack out of this car and we'll throw my sleds on the ice and we'll go get her done. All right. See you out there. All right. So one of the big things about salmon fishing is you pretty much your goal is to just cover water these fish a lot of the time is what they do is they just kind of roam and follow bait through the water so right now we're standing on basically a big turnaround so you can see the island here mainland's all through here we're basically what these fish do is they there's a big drop off right off the island and right now where we're standing there's a big flat about 30 feet of water so what they do is they take the bait and they push them up into that drop off and then turn them back around out this way and kind of keep circling as new schools of bait and new schools of salmon follow them in and out so kind of what i'm going to do is i kind of want to cover this uh flat up into that drop off so I'm gonna kind of do two diagonal lines. I only have five because it's only me out here today. So I'll probably do, you know, one up a little shallow right on the edge of that drop off, kind of diagonal three out into this, uh, from where I'm standing, the right side of this flat and pull my next two a little higher and out deeper um, to catch the very top of that flat where they first start pushing fish in. So I'm gonna go and punch some holes and we'll put, I'll show you how I put flags in. So one of the cool things about uh, salmon, at least that I think, is although, you know, like I said, we're fishing, you know, 30-ish feet of water for the most part is like an average. Um, really, it's anywhere from about 27 to 34. But salmon like to hit up under the ice. So even though we're fishing, say I'm standing right here right now on 32 feet of water, I'm only going to put this line down about 10 feet. And the reason for that is, is that salmon, what they tend to do is when they push fish up off that drop off, or they come through this basin with a school of salmon, pushing a school of bait, basically what they'll do is they'll kind of pack up and push the bait up under the ice, whether they use that drop off or they use a rush technique. So a lot of the times, if you keep your bait, you know, within uh, 10, 12, maybe down to 15 feet up under the ice, it kind of gives that illusion of a bait starting to move up in the column which is where they want it they want to pin that bait up under the ice so in standard rig um i usually use i like size two hooks i like to go a little bigger um they tend to swallow so about you know two feet above that mid-size split shot i also like a lot more fluorocarbon you know five to six feet because we're fishing wicked clear water so you know like usual, I'm running uh, smelts today. So I'm gonna take that, stick them right above the dorsal there, like so, and he's ready to go. So we're gonna put him down. And, and I'll also vary my bait depth, so you know, like I said, the salmon's goal is to push that bait right up under the ice, as, like as close to the top of the ice as they can. So I like to put some, you know, maybe I'll, I'll put it like just the floral carbon out. So, you know, it's four or five feet down. I'll take some like this and go to a mid depth, you know, 10, 11, 12 feet. And then I'll put some down in like the 15 foot range. I only have five today, so I can't get super varied, but that's kind of my philosophy. You know, like I said before, we want to cover water. So then from there, you know, we'll figure out spots that they're hitting. So where exactly in this flat they're running through. And then also we'll figure out what depth they're eating at. So another thing is um, 
I use lay down tip ups uh, specifically because they don't have drag. Um, salmon hate tension, especially when you're ice fishing. So they're grab and go predators. So like I said, they're, they're chasing schools of bait out and about. So when they grab a bait, they're grabbing and they're going. So when you get up to that flag, it's gonna be spinning and moving as long as that fish is still there. So with those stand-up tibos, because they, you know, you can adjust the drag on them. Sometimes if you forget, that fish feels the tension on that reel, on that line, and they spit. They spit that bait out. Sometimes they bury it so deep they don't even get the chance to spit it, but I don't even like to take that chance. So with these, or with salmon fishing, I use these guys, mainly for that reason. That and also we can see the bar spin when we walk up to it, so we know if a fish is there um, and if he's running. And usually with salmon, they're gonna be running. So that's just you know a little reason for why I prefer those. Um, last weekend I didn't get to use them. I had to use my stand-ups because where we we're standing right now, there's about a foot of snow. So you know sometimes you don't really have the choice, but if I do have the choice, I choose the laydowns. Alright, we got a flag. It's one of our inside ones. And with salmon, like I said before, they strip line, so you gotta giddy up to that flag. See so spinning. I'm also using some bigger smells, so sometimes they can trip them by accident. I don't see much spinning going on. So let's give it a check. It's pretty loose. Oh no, he's there. There's a fish there. Must have been trying to eat it. I came up to it. He doesn't feel bad either. Doesn't feel bad. He, he ripped some line before I got here. So he must have just relaxed with it. Feels like a nice fish. Hope it's a salmon. Should be. There's leader. Still haven't seen him yet. There he is. Oh yeah, night, real nice salmon. Oh yeah. That's how we start a day right there. That's probably a 16-inch salmon. Fat, fat, really fat. He's been eating. He's been eating good. All right, so good start. He buried that hook, so I'm definitely gonna keep him. But uh, yeah, good start. Like I said, probably 16-ish inches. They have to be 14 to keep, but he definitely makes that mark. So let's, all right, I'll get him off. And then we'll move on and hopefully we get a few more. Look at that, nice salmon to start the day. Give this guy a measure. See what we got. You know, look for it. No, don't move. Stop it. Stop it. Hey, I said I know he's a keeper. I'm just curious. So I'm moving. Let's lay that down. So this we can. We'll bring him to it. He's gonna be tough for the guy. There's the tail. Yeah, he's a little over 15, about 15, about 15 and a half. Nice salmon, nice first one. Sweet, so that's more, So we get to keep two here on this lake. So, you know, I'm, hopefully I can get another one. Keep him. Uh, maybe I'll, you know, try to find an even bigger fish to keep. Um, obviously, if another one buries a hook like he did, I'll keep it. But I definitely would like to try and find a bigger fish, but... You know, always keep the first one. That's what I like to say, you know. And we didn't get skunked. That's all that matters. Especially with salmon fishing. They can be tough. They can be tough customers. So, just catching one's always a good day. Uh, hopefully, we can get a few more. All right. Yeah, so while I'm setting this line up, uh, or this uh, tip of back up, I'll talk to you guys a little bit more. Just about uh, salmon fishing in general. So, one of the big things, um, I mean, with fishing in general, but especially salmonids, um, even more so during ice fishing season, 
um because fish are already inactive or less active because of the cooler water um is barometric pressure a lot of things it's one of those things that a lot of guys overlook um so salmonids so you know salmon trout species they all have uh larger swim bladders relative to their body size than other uh freshwater uh, fish species so when that barometric pressure drops it be it makes them basically shut off um something about the balance of the air in their swim bladders just makes them not want to eat become a lot less active and they kind of just bury themselves in deep water and don't really push and move so my today is actually it's lower pressure than i'd usually want to fish um i kind of wanted to come test this spot and just you know see what it was like against oops flag against not so great pressure so today it's you know sitting about 29.85 currently but it is going up it's going to hit about 28.95 in the next hour or so that thing's spinning like crazy Ooh, just slowed down so yeah so with that little bump of pressure later in the morning i'm hoping as it seems to be right now to turn them on so i've been waiting for fish for the last couple hours and he's on there but yeah so that like i said 20 like 9 or 29.9 is usually my cutoff that feels like a good fish too 29.9 is usually about my cutoff um so i'm kind of gonna hit that as my peak today and that seems that little spike that we're starting to go into seems to be turning them on he is not like the whole come on get your head up get your head up it's another good fish probably about the same size maybe a little smaller yeah a little smaller i'm not gonna keep him he's probably right about 14. he's skinny though so i'm just gonna get that hook out and put him right back show me the camera real quick maybe there he goes they're beautiful fish they got that ooh, that nice blue and purple on them and everything gorgeous fish but um yeah so as i was kind of saying that barometric pressure the higher it gets the more active and turned on those fish get so when you have days like today where you're right on that threshold like i said about that 29.9 is usually my cutoff for what i consider like a good day or a decent day of fishing once you hit you know 30 and up you kind of jump but that 29.9 is my kind of my threshold and we're sort of starting to get towards that little spike as we get towards mid-morning i've been out here for about two hours without a flag and i just got two in you know three or four minutes so that's probably those that first school of fish after that pressure started bumping up sort of circling in so now hopefully you know they keep drumming up and keep going so um yeah that's just one thing you know to keep in mind something that i always look at like if i have you know a couple days to choose from where i can go fishing i'll usually choose the one with higher pressure um i would have picked tomorrow but i don't really have the time when it's gonna it's gonna keep slowly rising through the day so those fish are gonna be wicked active tomorrow but like i said i don't really have the time and i also just kind of wanted to test that threshold a bit which as we're kind of aligning with that spike right now it's kind of showing me that that 29.9 threshold is about where we want to be so uh, i'll get these flags back in and hopefully i'll be back with another fish i still haven't even gotten that other one tied back up yet this flag next to it just popped they're all in this basin i can see it he's sitting there trying to eat it it's moving put this hook away uh, that's probably a smaller fish would be my guess yeah that, that might just be the smell moving it after he got hit but let's give it a shot see if he's there or not oh yeah he's there he's there oh he just realized he's hooked that's a nice that's a real nice fish at least it feels like it these salmon when they're active they fight hard they do not and they do not like the hole at all Ooh, there he goes again yeah he you can see him running it right through my hands they're tough mean fish they're aggressive too they fight hard they eat hard they'll chase baits all around yeah that's a real nice fish i'm gonna take my time if he wants it i'll let him have it can't get his head up quite through the hole oh yeah that's a yep and I'm only working on these lines with eight pound tests. So I gotta be careful. I can't really run them up against the edge of the hole. 
he does not like that hole. But that's a that's probably the biggest fish we've hooked this year. Come on, get that head up. Ah, he's mad. Ooh, they are. If if you hooked them on, you know, rod and reel, they fight hard. They're mean fish. There we go. Woo, another nice one. There we go. A little bit bigger than that, or a little longer than that one before. Probably weight wise, he's the same. Look at these beautiful fish. Oh, yeah, he's definitely longer. Just gorgeous with that blue and purple. Oh, let's get him in that sun a little bit. Got that beautiful silver shine. Awesome. I'm actually, I'll probably let him go just because I want to keep fishing a bit. Uh, I have no problems with if I only end up leaving with one, but they're starting to turn on now, so I totally expect to catch another. But beautiful, beautiful fish. So let me get him off. Yep, so I, I am, he ended up absolutely burying that hook. I couldn't really see at first glance how uh, deep he had it, so I'm going to end up keeping him. You can see he's bleeding pretty bad. But like compared to my boot, I wear a size 13 boot. That's a real nice fish, real nice salmon. He's definitely probably over that 16 inch mark. Um, not as fat as that first keeper, but a little bit longer. So that's my second keeper. Um, I'm gonna throw these flags down again. Uh, I'll just catch and release fish. Um, and we'll see what happens. Like I said, I'm fine, perfectly fine with keeping those two fish. Both beautiful, beautiful salmon. So I'm perfectly, you know, good eater size. So then we'll put these down, catch and release. Obviously, if we catch one bigger, so be it. I'm fine putting them back. Um, a lot of these fish are stocked in this lake, but we've had specimens. I bet that first one probably has eggs in it. We've had specimens with eggs in them, meaning they are reproducing in here. So obviously, I mean, I can only keep two, so I can't really do much damage on my own. But I like to put, you know, some of the bigger fish back if I can. So, you know, I have no problem catching release fish in the rest of the day. Um, but yeah, great little run. Three fish in about, you know, seven, eight minutes. Uh, probably, you know, a good circle into this basin and back out. So uh, I'll finish, hopefully finish setting them back up and throw them down and we'll catch some more. All right, I literally just came to pick up. That second keeper I just got, and the flag right next to it just popped. And he's ripping, so I'm gonna try and get this hook in him early, because I don't want him to bury it, since I can't keep another one. And I got him. They must have him pushed up on this drop off, because this is one of those inside holes. Not that big of a fish. Oh, it's a white perch. Interesting. Small one. Buried that smelt pretty good. Interesting. A little different. Not a bad one. I'm not going to keep them. He's not that big. I've got places where I can catch big ones, so. There we go. That smelt's pretty dead. So yeah, nice little white perch. A little different. Put them down. Usually if we get, you know, bycatch, it's usually white perch. Um, they, especially this time of year, they tend to go a little deeper since we're later in the season. Um... Yeah, I was literally, I just picked this guy up to bring him in. Whoops. But, uh, yeah, we if we're getting bycatch, it's usually white perch just because they'll, you know, run down into some of those deeper spots. Um, especially this time of the year, March, they tend to go a little deeper, uh, get a little more skittish. But, yeah, so we caught, you know, second species. Very cool. I wouldn't be surprised if another flag goes off with one of those since they also travel in schools. But, um... Yeah, new species. So I'll get that one back down now, put a fresh new bait on it, and hopefully we can get some more. All right, got a flag, got a flag. And I see it slowly turning. That's probably, ooh, now it's not very slowly turning. It's ripping. Ooh, it's just stuck. Got him. Get this string out of the way. Get out of there. Stay pin. Damn, he ripped some line. Woo! It's not a nice fish. 
It's not gonna like the hole. Nope. Oh yeah, nice fish, nice fish. Solid, probably 13 and a half, 14 ish. You know, keeper size, but we got our two, so he'll go back. Okay, let's put this little guy back. There we go. Alrighty. All right, that makes four salmon. Awesome. All right, let's get that flag back down. He ripped a ton of line. He was ready to go. I'm um, probably going to stay out here maybe another hour. Um, that pressure is supposed to drop again by that point. So once it drops back down, it'll probably turn back to what it was early in the morning. So I'm just going to, you know, like I said, give about another 45 minutes an hour. Uh, once that pressure drops, I'll probably move on. But I'll get those flags back in and we'll keep on fishing. All right, I got one. I actually just moved a couple of the flags further in towards that turnaround where we were getting this inside turn flag here. And the one I put inside of it actually just hit. So that's a good sign. Let me not run on clean ice because then I will fall. And it's spinning slowly. He's there. Oh, there it goes. Now he's running. Oh yeah, I got him. Line's actually going in towards shore. It's a little different. Usually they'll run down the depth line. He's mad though. Solid fish, real nice fish. Still smaller than the two keepers we have, but still a nice fish. Right, open your mouth up. Nope, nope, stop it. Let's see if we can get that hook out real quick. I can't see because of the smoke there. All right, here we go. Another nice salmon, probably right about, or just over 14 inches, so, you know, keeper size, but I'll put him back because he's getting feisty. But, you know, I got my two keepers, so I'll put him back. Uh, I probably wouldn't even keep that fish anyway, he's not that big. Um, yeah, so let's get that flight back down. Like I said, that's one of the ones I, I didn't really say it, for, unfortunately for you guys. But uh, so this flag right here, I don't know how well you can see it on the camera, but there's one, you know, 20-ish yards in front of me. It's the one we caught a couple on, and that's kind of right on the turnaround of that drop off. So I put one about 20-ish yards to the left of that. At, uh, that's kind of that first little curve off of it. And I put one on the inside on the drop just in case, you know, they push them further up and that one hit. So we'll, uh, I'll go grab bait, put a fresh one on there. So, you know, it's good to see that a plan worked out a little bit. So that's five salmon now. Uh, still got, you know, our two keepers. Those ain't going anywhere. So, yeah, let's, I'll probably keep them down, you know, in a little bit longer. Pressure should be dumping here. Or not dumping, I should say, but dropping back to where it started this morning in about 20-ish, 25 minutes. So that might put it back below that threshold and turn them off. So hopefully we can pick another one or two, uh, and then I'll get out of here relatively early, have the rest of the day to myself. All right, let's get going. All righty, so pressure's gonna start dropping. It just went down, you know, 100th, which isn't much, but it's a signal of it starting to go down because I know it's going to continue going down through the day. So I'm going to start packing up here soon, but I figured to show you our two keepers. So this guy was the first one, the one here on my right hand. Let me turn him a little bit. Big fat guy. And this guy on my left was the second one. Uh, this one was about 15 and a half. This one's just a tad longer, about 16 inches. Uh, this guy's probably about, you know, a pound and a half, maybe a little under just because of the somewhere in that area just because that big old belly but uh like i said i'm gonna go i'm gonna start packing up now and uh then i'll talk to you guys real quick and get you on with your days as well and i'll go enjoy mine so let's go pick those tip-ups up and get out of here <laughs> 